Hi kindergarten, it's Mrs. Nelson. I hope you're doing well. Just wanted to start off by saying I miss you so much and I hope you're staying safe and healthy and I'm excited to get to read for you today. So we're going to do another non-fiction real book about sea otters. Look how cute they are. Oh my gosh, I want to see a real sea otter in real life. So my friends, nonfiction books are full of real information, real facts, so it's not pretend. This is the front cover and the back cover. And it's National Geographic for Kids. So National Geographic um, has a TV show with real information and then they also write books. And the author is Jill um, Esberon. So she wrote the words and found all the information and then someone else must have taken the, the photographs. Oh my gosh, look at them all together. Too cute. Sea otters, explore my world. <gasps> look closely at this picture. Can you see that they're laying on each other? Precious. Hello, sea otters. These furry floaters rock and roll with the never ending waves. Splish, splash, splosh. A group of sea otters is called a raft. Hmm, I have a connection. I know what a raft is. A raft is something that you can float on to go down a river or to hang out in the lake. So this is called a raft when they're all connected together. Does it look similar to maybe like a floaty or an inner tube that you might go on in the water? Yeah. Playful sea otters spin and twirl, romp together. Wow, look at them in the water. They chase, they dive, they pop up. Surprise! Look at his facial expression. They kind of look like dogs. One slips under, swimming down, down, down to search the ocean floor for albinon and clams. An albalon is a type of big sea snail. And look at that closely. What he's carrying back up is a sea snail. To open the stubborn shell, the otter puts a rock on her chest. She whacks the shell against it until, ta-da! Wow, they're very clever. They know how to use their hands and tools to get what they need. Rub-dub scrub! After her meal, the sea otter washes her face and neck. And then this is a little bubble full of inf information. Each day, sea otters spend several hours grooming themselves. A clean coat is important. I have a connection there. My, my cat cleans her coat. So certain animals clean themselves too. And then others, you kind of have to clean them in a bath or in the shower. Using her teeth and claws, she combs her coat until every inch is smooth and shiny. Snuggle, a pup r rides his mother's chest, cuddling close, comfy, cozy. Oh, so that's what the other picture was. The pup is like the baby is riding on its mother. The baby otter nurses her baby, then grooms and fluffs his thick fur. So he, she nurses her baby, so they must be mammals. Baby sea otter fur. Ooh, I thought that was hay. If you look at it closely, that's the fur. The pup was born in the water, but cannot swim yet. Sorry, the sun is shining on the book. Still he's safe. The air is trapped inside his fluffy, puffy coat, and it keeps him afloat. A pup's air-filled fluff makes going underwater impossible, even if he wanted to. That's something I did not know. So their, their fur actually is full of air and keeps them afloat. Because usually babies don't really know how to swim right away, but this, this fur isn't a tool that helps them. That's so interesting. I wish real human babies had that device too. Their hair could help them float and you wouldn't have to worry about them. Before the mother otter dies for food, she wraps her pup in kelp to keep him from drifting away. When she disappears, the pup worries and whines. He can only wait bobbing like a little fuzzy cork. Oh, he has to wait in the water. Near the seafloor, the mother weaves through swaying stalks of kelp on the lookout for an urchin. So if we look closely, this is an urchin, a sea or urchin, and this is her diving down. 
Back on the surface, she crunches it with her sharp teeth. Yum. That does not look like something I would want to eat. It looks spiky. After a few months later, a sleek fur coat has replaced the pup's fluff. So the fluff is starting to change into a coat, more of a shiny coat like the mommy. He's learned to swim and hunt, to dive and play, and to groom himself. So many things this pup is learning to do independently. Kind of like you. You guys need your parents to help you with a lot of things, but now you're becoming more independent. You're starting to make your bed on your own, get yourself dressed, tie your own shoes. You're becoming more independent. Ride on, sea otter. Rock and roll with the never-ending waves. Splish, splash. Look at me. I'm waterproof. As sea otter's thick fur grows into layers, the underfur next to its skin is soft and fluffy. Over that are long guard hairs that act like a raincoat. As long as an otter's fur is clean, water has a hard time getting through. Wow! That must help them stay warm in the water. Is your hair short or long? Do you fluff your hair after it's washed? After grooming, sea otter rolls in the water using its paws to fluff air back into its coat. Your head holds about 10,000 hairs. A sea otter's coat has as many as millions of hairs every square inch. Perfect paradise. The cold waters of the Pacific Ocean's northern coastline makes perfect homes for sea otters, and here's why. They're shallows. It's only a short drive to these sea floors where sea otters find their food. Land is only a short swim away. Even, through, even though they spend most of their lives in the water, some sea otters like to come onto the beach to rest and sleep. Kelp forests grow here. Sea otters wrap themselves in kelp so they won't float away while sleeping. Kelp forests are another place to find food too. And then you can see a picture of kelp at the bottom. Seafood snacks. Sea otters like to eat the meat inside albanon, crabs, clams, mussels, and snails. They also like soft creatures such as squid and octopus. Have you tasted crab or clams before? I've tasted both. They're pretty tasty. Here's clams. Here's crab. And look, this sea otter got an octopus. Sea otters even help keep kelp forests healthy. How? By eating the sea urchins that eat and destroy the bottom of the kelp stalks. So there's the kelp stalks. There's a sea urchin. So eating those sea urchins kind of helped the kelp forest to keep growing because those urchins destroy the kelp forest. Home of the sea otters. Sea otters lives in parts of North Pacific Ocean. So there's the different parts where sea otters live. And here's a map key. So the map key is red. So all the red parts are where sea otters live. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me for another read aloud. I hope you enjoyed that. I learned a lot of interesting information about sea otters, especially about their fur, how it's fluffy and it helps them float. What did you learn about sea otters? I'd love to see you write about it and I will see you soon. Have a great day.